Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. We kind of stopped in Galatians 5 last week. And um, you know, we're moving along here. I think we'll, be, we'll get through the rest of the writings of Paul a lot quicker than we did the, the first part that we went through. I mean, you know, first, like I said, First and Second Corinthians and Romans are pretty good and long books. Hallelujah. Amen. We were in Romans chapter 5 last week. We kind of got down here um, to the works of the flesh. Um, so we'll just pick up in verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Now, Notice a lot of people who teach some of this crazy stuff say, you know, it doesn't matter what I do, I'm under grace. Um, you know, I can't mess up my walk with the Lord because I'm under grace. Paul says, walk in the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. In other words, if you'll walk in the Spirit, you will not do fleshly things. So people who think they can go around walking in the flesh and get away with it because they're under grace are not walking in the Spirit. And they that, are, they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, the, but, you are, but if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now, think about that now. So if you walk according to the flesh, you are under the law. I'm just going to... That's what he said. Walk in the Spirit and... You, and, and uh, yeah, if, you walk, if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. If you're walking being led by the Holy Ghost, you're not under the law. What would he do? He will lead you into the power and the grace of God to live according to God's codes, moral codes, spiritual codes, godly codes. He'll, you'll walk that way. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are the, which are, and the word these is not in the Greek. It's added because the translators thought, so, but which are? Let's just say they take out these because we, we'll show you something here in a minute. Adultery, fornication uncleanness. Now the first three are sexual sins. Adultery is engaging yourself in relationships with someone else outside and, and you're married. You're, you're engaging in, in, in sexual relations and you are married. And that with your wife or husband you are engaging in relations with someone else outside of your marriage covenant is adultery. Okay? Fornication covers about any other kind of sexual sin you can think of. Okay? Just whatever it is, it's under fornication. The next word goes in and, and separates out uncleanliness or uncleanness is a reference to homosexuality. Other translations translate it that way. Okay? It is an unclean act. It's an unclean act. It is not normal. It is not alternate. It is uncleanness. It violates the laws of God. It violates the law of nature. Paul wrote in the book of Romans and said that when men, men left the natural use of the woman and burned in their lust one with another, doing that which is unseemly. Now let me just make a break down here. Perverse. All right? Nature says it's wrong. Hello? I'm attracted to them. Get the devil cast out of you. Hello. It's not normal. I said it's not normal. It is unnatural. Nature teaches us what's natural. Hello. Without going any further, without getting too much deeper, nature set parts up to fit a certain way. And that's how they fit. And that's how they work. Hello. Anything else is unnatural. All right? Now, we don't, I don't want to get too graphic, but listen, we, we're living in a society. Your kids have seen stuff and heard stuff in school that way beyond what I just said at third grade. Okay? And if they're in Common Core, they're getting, they're getting some perverse education in the fourth grade. It's, 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 it's demonic. I'm going to tell you something. There's something about the educational spirit. The academician spirit. Now, not every academia is like this, but there is a spirit of academia that they are per they're perverts. Some of the most perverse 
things in, 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 human, in humanity and the flesh have come out of academia. Now, I can share some stuff with you, but I don't want to because it's just, you know, the Bible even tells us we shouldn't even talk about the things they do in darkness. There's stuff that academians have come up with that is just disgusting. But see, there's a spirit there. There's a, there's a spirit that gets off on them. You know, they just had a school system somewhere where they were having problems with people, uh, fecal matter getting on the course. They pulled, made all the kids pull their pants down so they could go do a poop break a check on 11 year olds. Oh yeah, that's what I said. Uh, uh, excuse me? No, there's, see there's perverts out there. And that spirit has been unleashed because of things going on in our country. More and more and more students are being uh, sexually molested by teachers and women teachers on the male students. It's been this unleashed. It's crazy. And somehow, now, somehow or another, people think it's, it's, they want to kill a guy if he has sex with a girl when she's young. But when it's the guy and the woman doing that to the son, I mean, people go, oh, that's cool, man. I wish I was there. See, that's the perversion of the mind that takes place. It's, a, it's an evil spirit, sexual perversion. When you go study history, and more and more sin was rampant, the more sexual perversion took place. The more sin is loosed, the more sexual perversion takes place. And the reason is, is because the flesh is driven. It is driven. Oh, you're a Victorian. No, I'm a, I'm a godly person. God gave sex to be within the confines of a marriage of a man and a woman. Now, I don't care. Not a tranny. Not somebody has gone through a sex change between chromosomal men and chromosomal women. And that is the only, and, and the married. And that is the only acceptable relationship for sex. You're, you're narrow-minded. Yep, narrow is the way. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Hello. So, yeah, I am narrow-minded. So is Jesus. So is God the Father. And so is God the Holy Ghost. Well, I just don't like that. I think you just ought to, you know, you know not, not judge me. I'm not judging you. The Bible judges your actions. Let me show you. I'm going to read something here. So the first three are deal with sexual sins. Then he goes on and starts talking about lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, stri uh, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Now the Greek structure here is this, that these are not the sum total of the works of the flesh. And they might be the top whatever, top nine, are the ones that, that cover a lot of ground. And such like meaning... Anything else is kind of like the, the deal that just basically is the, you know, the, uh, the yielding to the flesh and letting the flesh control and the flesh take charge and the flesh rule and, you know, just living out of your flesh and not out of your spirit. Those are the works of the flesh, and they're not right. As a matter of Paul, Paul goes on and says this, As I have told you in time past, they which do such thing. Now, the word do such thing, that, that Greek uh, verb there, carries the... Uh, idea that you practice this okay now everybody on the planet is capable of failing and getting into sin and you know and asking God to forgive them and getting restored okay and there is forgiveness and restoration but there are people who practice these things we got quote unquote I say it with disdain a denomination called the metropolitan community churches which is homosexual churches. And they celebrate their lifestyles as Christians. And they teach them why the Bible didn't mean what it said when it talks about homosexuality and different things. It, and that's not what it meant. And they take these obscure, and they take these lunatic, you know, um, theologians who don't know their back end from a hole in the ground. Hello. I proved that to somebody one day. I said, you don't know your back end from a hole in the ground. They said, what? I said, here's a hole in the ground. Here's your back end. And here's another hole in the ground. Now, which one's a hole in the ground? And they pointed to the, you know. I said, which one's your back end? And they said, that. I said, no, that's a hole in the ground. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
How do they, a little lighthearted, whatever, because we're getting kind of heavy in here. But they celebrate their homosexuality when the Bible clearly says they which practice such things, listen to this, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, there's no ifs, ands, or buts there. There is no, there is no wiggle room to get out of this. If you practice it, you don't inherit. See, we got people teaching that God's love is so great, it doesn't matter what you do, you get to go to heaven. And Paul writes and says, if you practice this, you don't inherit. Now, who's the person walking in love? The idiot who tells you you can do anything you want to and get away with it, or the one who says stop doing that because God's word says if you keep doing that, you're not going to inherit, and you're going to go to hell. So who really loves people? You're mean because you say people are going to go to hell. No, it's a warning. Love demands that I warn you, that I snatch you from the flames of hell. It, it, it's not love <coughs> to let people do whatever they want to do and destruct. That is not love. Love does not let people destruct. Love does everything it can to stop it. Are y'all here? Have you gone home? But see, the, 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 see, the demonized mind, what's the demonized mind? The worldly mind. The carnal mind is demonized. Now, I don't mean you got devils, but it is, <coughs> it operates and functions from under the realm of demonic influence. The carnal mind is not subject to the laws of God, for it is an enmity against the laws of God, and is not subject to the laws of God, neither indeed can be. What does that mean? You're not going to be able to reason with people who think it's okay to do something. You have to say what the Bible says and let God deal with them. If they reject that, that's between them and God. But we can't go around, if we just love them, they're going to change. Really? I said, really? See, we've gotten this idea that if we, if the church can just get her act together, everybody's going to want to be here. I don't know if you've noticed on Facebook lately, about every article I see, I, I just got, I'm about fed up with it. Ten reasons why the millennials are leaving the church. Five reasons you should never do this in church. Six things you should never say as a Christian. Like, I'm blessed. Oh, yeah. I am blessed, 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 blessed. I'm blessed coming in, and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city, and I'm blessed in the country. I'm blessed in my cattle. I'm blessed in the fruit of my kind. My storehouses are blessed. My hands are blessed. Everything I set my hand to is blessed. Glory be to God. I'm blessed, 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 blessed. Take your stupid article and go burn it. Everything is about how the church is messed up and how these hipster cool people really have a grip on everything. So they're running around with their skinny jeans and bedhead and gauges and all this and tatted up to the wazoos. The people they're going to reach already got all that. They've already been there. What have I got attached? God will save you and God will forgive you, but it's not, it, I don't need to go get them to reach people. As a matter of fact, Jesus went to the sinners dressed as a rabbi, not as a sinner. He wore rabbinical clothing. They called him rabbi and teacher. He ate with the public as a sinner to minister to them. But he did not become them. Why? They've already got what they got. You know, somebody wrote another dumb article the other day about how bad the church culture is. Now, let's stop for a second. When you come to church, are we not supposed to have the culture of a church? Why? Because we're our own company. We're where people come who need to be strengthened in the Lord. Amen. Well, you know, the sinners come in and you're talking, you know, about being blessed and you're, you know, this and that, you know, and, and that's not real. No, the real Jesus they need, we go out and share with them in the streets. The church is to build the believer up so they can go out into the streets. So I will not apologize to your dumb articles about being churchy in church. I won't, I won't apologize that we worship the Lord and lift our hands. I won't apologize that we walk in the things of God. I won't apologize that we worship Jesus in church. Hello? I'm not going to apologize for it. And when I go to the highways and byways, I'm going to carry that Jesus to them in power and authority. 
I'm not going to try to change our church into some kind of, you know, cool thing that everybody just wants to go hang out at. Sit down and drink, you know, I mean, beer and, 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 and stogie parties for the people because you're going to get them into the church. Craziness is going on out there. No, you're not in the last days. The seducing of spirits and the doctrines of devils are going to come. I'm telling you, they're released. They're released. They that do such things. Things they didn't practice them. Now, I'm gonna look at you. I'm gonna tell you if you're watching on the internet and you're out practicing fornication, thinking you're going to heaven because you're in the grace, you are dead wrong. Paul said, You shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Pastor Ed didn't say it, Paul did. So, I would, I would think you it'd be smart for you to repent and get right and live right. Well, I want to have sex. Get married to the opposite sex. Anything else God does not ordain or recognize. I don't care if the government does. I don't care if you've got a piece of paper. I don't, if God doesn't honor it and God doesn't recognize it, it ain't so. That same bunch says God doesn't even exist. So, pfft, I'm on a roll. Sorry. But, I'm, I'm, you know, it's time we stop Mickey Mousing around and trying to convince people that they want to they be a Christian without becoming Christ-like. Now, some of y'all read the article. I may have seen the article within the last week. The co-founder of the Newsboys, that great Christian rock and roll band from the late 80s and early 90s. Oh, the awesome, you know, they had the dumb cereal song. Huh? Breakfast in hell. You know, Captain Crunch and all these different breakfasts and whatever. You know, powerful lyrics. Okay? I mean, just turn people's hearts, you know. Now, it was music, and they thought it was cool. The co-founder renounced Christ, said he's not a Christian. He is now an atheist. He does not believe in God. Because, you know, he says, I didn't want to be judged by the churches, whatever. I wanted to be judged by my music. I wanted to play rock and roll. Well, the problem is, pal, now we need to, listen, I'm not attacking him, but listen, this is the culture we've created in the church. It's about cool. It's about slick. It's about selling albums or CDs or MP3s. It's about making money. It's about going out and doing concerts. Everybody's showing up and saying, man, this is cool. And, they don't, and, and they're renouncing Christ. Because they just want to play cool music. And the music companies thought that they had it. Listen, Christian music companies, for the most part, are just like the world's music companies. They're looking for people to sit, that'll sell records. And they don't want them to have some kind of strong commitment. They want them to do generic stuff that, they, that, that people will listen to. Because if you come in there and say, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell, they don't want to hear that. They just want you to sing your watered-down lyrics so they can sell more albums. So have more sales. Hello. Well, that went over big. They that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But, now Paul comes back and gives an, an antithesis to the thesis of the works of the flesh. He gives the antithesis, which is the fruit of the Spirit. See, we are not called to live in the works of the flesh. We're called to produce the fruit of the Spirit. Now, in the Greek, the word, the, the, there is no capital or lowercase. There is um, just a, a single case in, the, in this Koine Greek. And so you, didn't, you only knew if it was talking about the Holy Spirit if, or, or by context. Whether it was the human spirit or the Holy Spirit was by context. I present to you, this is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit working in our lives helps us. It is, the, it is the fruit of the recreated human spirit. Our spirits produce fruit. Our, see, it's works of flesh. Our fruit of the spirit is. Talking about our spirit produces the fruit of love, of joy, of peace, of love. It comes out of our spirit. Now, the spirit working in us helps cultivate and bring that to pass. The Holy Spirit does. But you see, it is your human spirit that is to produce the fruit of these things. Why? Because we're to be living out of the spirit, out of our spirit, and not out of our flesh. 
So thus, our spirit is to produce fruit, and which is, is in contrast to the works of the flesh. Now, the first one is love. Think about that. The first one, the other one is adultery. The first three are, are, uh, sin, are, are, are sexual. The first one here is love. Now, let me, let me say this. If you love your neighbor, you won't commit adultery with their spouse. It's just real, it's real plain. Men, I don't care how hot she is and what she wears to the pool. Hello. If you love your neighbor, you will not commit adultery with his wife. So out of your spirit you live and not out of your flesh. Because your flesh is, whoa, baby. Let's get it on. That's what your flesh says. Are you here? That's what your flesh says. But your spirit says, I love my neighbor. I can't trespass against my brother. Now I'm talking from a man's perspective. The women, the same thing. I couldn't trespass against my neighbor's, my, 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 my neighbor, the wife, uh, her. I love her. She's my neighbor. I love her. And the Lord. Can't go sleep with her husband, no matter how much of a hunk I think he is. Hunk or babe don't matter. Love says no. Love constrains the flesh. Love pulls the flesh under and says no. Takes it out to the woodshed and gets it a spanking. Hello? Love. So the, the love of God. We, the, 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 the love that God has placed in our heart manifests itself in the fruit of love in our lives. And it comes out of our spirit. See, we're to live out of our spirit. We're to live out of love. Joy. You know, the Bible talks about, see, there's the joy of our salvation. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's joy that comes out of the human heart that can't come out of your head. There's stuff that goes on, mess your head up. Hello? Peace. See, you can get peace out of your spirit when there's turmoil all around you. Oh, thank God. Can somebody else say amen. amen. Long suffering. Wow. Long suffering is just that, suffering long. In other words, you're, you're in it for the long haul. You have patience. You're going to see it through to the end because you know you win. Amen? Gentleness. Boy, you start talking about, look back up here, wrath and strife and seditions, and they have the fruits, gentleness. Gentleness. We're to be gentle. Amen? Goodness. Faith, really faithfulness is this, this word should be translated, faithfulness, not just faith. Okay? Meekness, being humble, having a meek and humble spirit. Temperance. <laughs> okay, there goes your I can do anything I want and get away with it. Hello? Temperance takes care of all the works of the flesh. Brings everything into moderation. You only do it when it's, it's right. You keep it. Listen, you know what? Now, Jane and I went out to eat today. We, she, she wanted to have something for lunch, and sometimes we try to find it. Sometime during the week, we have a date day. And today's her day that she gets off a little bit earlier. And so we went, we went over to Grandover and got their lunch. The lunch is way more, less expensive than their evening and way less than our Sunday buffet. I like the Sunday buffet, but it's, it's, a, one, it's, it's a once a year thing kind of, you know. It's expensive. So you go every, every blue moon. Blue moon. Anyway, I'm sorry. But, you know, we, we, were, we had lunch there. And, man, I'll tell you, I, I ordered roast beef with cheese. And I just, I, I said, look. Let's just, let's just totally change this. I know you got this, 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 this. I, I want beef. I want cheese. And I want regular mayonnaise. Don't want none of this funky mayonnaise. Horseradish and basil, you know, whatever. I just want good old American mayonnaise. If you got Dukes, that'll be the best. You know, so what's wrong with Hellman's? Dukes is the best. I'm a Dukes man. All right. Anyway. And because I didn't get anything else, I guess because I didn't get anything else out of it, it came out, it was about that thick. And there was just a little layer of cheese and mayonnaise at the top. And, and, and the inside was a stack of roast beef. And I told him I wanted it cooked medium well. At least I don't want no bleeding. I don't like my beef where I bite it. It moves. You may love it. I don't. You know, I know people who want it to come out, put it on the grill, flip it over, take it off. You know, and when they cut it, it's, it's, it's blue in the middle. Not even red, blue. That's just disgusting. 
That's why they drink wine, to kill everything in it. <laughs> got to have a certain wine with this. Now you're killing all the bacteria in there because you didn't cook it. You know, all right. Hallelujah. Where was I before I got off on all that? Oh, so anyway, go get this. Yeah, that was good. But you know what? I can't go do that every day. That would be out of, that'd be out of temperance, out of moderation. I wouldn't be moderate. You know, every once in a while, you go to something that's kind of an all-you-can-eat kind of thing. You, if you go to the beach, they got, you know, about every seafood place at the beach is an all-you-can-eat buffet. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, uh, when we go and do that, we do it maybe once a year. And I go somewhere, and I don't care for the seafood that much. I'm glad they have fried chicken or whatever, you know. But my family loves crab legs. And it's all the crab legs you want with the all-you-can-eat buffet. And that's about all they'll eat. But they will eat. And they will get their money's worth. Because at the per pound price, the people lose money. I mean, they're, they're, they're sitting there and they're slurping it out, putting it in the butter and going on for it. And I'm sitting over there and I'm full from eating three pieces of chicken or whatever, whatever else they had up there that was non, non-ocean. Oh, eat popcorn shrimp. Yeah, that's about it, you know. It's maybe some fried flounder if it's cooked right, whatever. But they're sitting there just going after it. We don't do that every day. You can't do that. That's not temperate to just live like that. Can't do it. You know, back when Shoney's had the all-you-can-eat buffet, everybody, you know, every day. It was every day of the week. You can't do that every day of the week. All right? It's just not being temperate. You've got to be temperate in things. You have to control yourself. You know, you can't order, go get you a Mrs. Edwards Boston cream pie every night and eat it. Not a piece, the whole thing. <laughs> Are you here? You go home. I mean, you don't pull up to the gas station, get your two liter of Coke for the day and drive around and drink it all day. That's not temperate. Now, every once in a while, I mean, you know, we, we, we overindulge that. Thanksgiving, you always do it. You eat too much turkey. Then you can't, can't, can't even function because that turkey has something that makes you sleepy. You know? I mean, turkey does, chicken does. And, you, you know, we, we get these huge, we get, like this year we had a 23 bird for to pound for Thanksgiving and a 22 for Christmas. Oh, yes. That's a lot of bird. And we don't eat that at one city. Don't eat it at two. Don't eat it at three. You know, by the time you get done with it, okay, we've had enough turkey until next year. And that's about it. You know, you don't have any more again until the next year. Temperate, you've got to be temperate. And in all things, you can't just live your life in an in indulgence stage. You just can't live there. That's not right. That's fleshly. Okay, we're to be temperate. Then Paul says this, against such there is no law. What? There is no law against the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit supersedes the law. And if you live there, you'll live godly, and you'll live right, and you'll live according to the things of God. Amen. I said amen. And so that's where we need to live. And then he goes on here and says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So when you got born again, you, you crushed the ability of the flesh to dictate. Remember we talked about this a few weeks ago, actually late, like October or November of last year. Um, that when you get born again, you live in a whole new plane altogether. The flesh no longer has the authority to force you to live there. Yeah. So when you got born again, you crucified the flesh and the affections thereof. In other words, you came into a place where it no longer has the right to demand you do these things. As a believer, you're empowered to say no and to live out of your spirit. And quite frankly, that is grace. The empowerment. Now, the empowerment to and the doing are not the same thing. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Just because you're un, you've been empowered doesn't mean you, you acted on. Okay? Just, you know, we talk about a lot of times this old story that they used to tell about this woman in England. She was poor. She'd been a house servant to a, a rich person for for years and years and years and years, and they passed away. But uh, in, in part of what they, when they passed away, they gave this woman something. She didn't know what it was. She had it framed on her wall. And it was a, um, 
It was a certificate of something. You know, I don't know if it was a, a treasury bill or, or, or whatever, but it was worth like $25,000. She's laying up there with no food. Uh, it's freezing because there's no heat in her home, and she's got something on the wall. The doctor came and looked up and said, what is that? She said, well, you know, so-and-so gave it to me, and I framed it. Didn't even know what it was. Bearer bond or something. You know, you, know, you understand, some, something from the, you know, in the realm of stocks where it was worth $25,000. See, having it and using it weren't the same thing. Being under grace and living that way are not the same. You, know, you have to live it for what you're under to be effective. You've been empowered to live above the flesh, but if you don't live above the flesh, grace is doing you no good. Grace is not the ability to live in sin and still go to heaven. Grace is the ability to live above sin and live like you're in heaven. Amen. You can live above sin. You can live above the dictates of the flesh. They that cruci crucified the affection of the lust. If we live in the spirit, we also let, it, let us also. So I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. And Paul says, well, let us walk in the spirit. If you live in it, walk in it. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another or envying one another. And we're going to start right here because next week we're going to pick up chapter 6. I'm not going to get through chapter 6 in, in the next few minutes. Um, we'll pick up here next week and finish. And then we, the following week we'll get into um, um, the book of Ephesians. Praise the Lord. Okay? Glory to God. Let me see here. I believe, I believe Ephesians is next in the order. You know, just let me make sure. Not just in order of the book, but actually in order chronologically of writing. Give it to Paul's writings here. Order and dates. Okay. Yep, Ephesians is next. And that will be, now we're going to, have to go back to the book of Acts. So we've got to get him out of the book of Acts and get him in prison. Okay. We left Paul, we left Paul over at Corinth. We've got to finish that. So we'll get back into the book of Acts. We'll move out of the book of Acts. And then Paul's going to be in prison. Okay. Got to get him in jail. So we can go to the next book. Okay. For the next four books, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Philemon are written uh, during his first imprisonment. Um, Hebrews, which we're not going to cover because we're, we're, we're going to just say that that's, you know, questionable whether Paul wrote it. But we'll, we, I believe he did. But we're going to leave that out for this teaching. Titus and 1st and 2nd Timothy were during his second imprisonment. And then we'll be done. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the giving online button. Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving.